Good day everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to Renewable News. I bring you everything that's happening in the tech space of everything green for the week commencing the 11th of February 2019. On today's show, what was Ford's factory in Geelong goes green, Tesla rolls out two new features and I explore the Climate Council's report for Australia and offer some tips on how you can help get businesses onto a cleaner, greener path. First up, who recalls the Ford Motor Manufacturing site on the Princess Highway in Geelong? You know, the one that closed in 2016. Well, I'm glad to report that those jobs and investment that we lost will soon be replaced in part by a company called Vestas to build wind turbines. Located at the former site, the facility is part of Vestas Renewable Energy Hub, termed by them as a multidisciplinary industry development. They'll be making four megawatt drivetrains and hubs, not only for Victorian projects, but also to support wind projects around Australia and also testing renewable energy technologies. Clive Turton, Vestas Asia Pacific President, noted that Vestas is committed to building new skills in the local workforce in Geelong and our wind turbine component assembly and testing capability. We are helping build on Geelong's background as a heavy manufacturing hub and use that to establish a renewable energy future. In Moran, we are partnering with an experienced manufacturing service provider with outstanding capabilities and skilled personnel. Their experience in automotive aerospace, defence and rail industry meets all of our requirements around quality and technical expertise. Now this is great and I'm really encouraged to see that facilities like this are being repurposed for big manufacturing and that perhaps workers who lost their jobs following Ford's withdrawal from local production, they can maybe now find new opportunities in this sector. I'll keep an eye on this story and bring you more as time goes on. Next, Tesla rolled out late last week its dog and sentry modes to all Teslas made on or after 2016. The first one's designed to reassure any good Samaritans who might see pets in a car that the owner will soon be back and the temperature is safe for them. Nice. My only hope is that it doesn't get misused for, you know, who knows. Anyway, another good one is Sentry Mode, and available free for all testers built from 2016 onwards. Think of it like as an escalating car alarm, which warns that would be bad people that their unwanted presence is being taped by either the rear facing side cameras or the front. Now, footage of this hasn't been released by Tesla officially, and from what I've seen on YouTube, it's a little buggy and inconsistent. So, if there's anyone out there with a Tesla, let me know if you've received this over the air update and how's it going. And hey, if you have a question or a comment, please leave it for me below. And whilst there, maybe consider subscribing or give the video a thumbs up. That'd be really appreciated. I'll put a few out every week, and your support really counts. Moving on to our final story for today, I thought it would be good to review another good news story about how electricity generation from coal and gas has actually decreased for a fifth consecutive year. The Climate Council Australia published in late 2018 an in-depth review of energy production in Australia for year 2017. For those who may not know who the Climate Council is, they're made up of some of the country's leading climate scientists, health and renewable energy and policy, policy experts. The 44-page report reviewed Australia's current state of renewable power being delivered. Noted on a per capita basis, Tasmania, the ACT and South Australia are class leaders with renewable energy output in the order of 1,831 megawatts or put another way, 43 to 80% of the total energy output. My state, Victoria, ranked fourth we actually generated 1,643 in green power. The slow ones to change are New South Wales, Northern Territory and Western Australia, all known for the wealth of minerals, but also access to lots of sunlight. Weird, very weird. On the jobs front, more good news here, with more than 10,000 jobs being created, mainly in Queensland, Victoria and New South Wales, with both small and large scale solar projects helping drive our push to be 100% renewable. The report states that this rapid increase in solar PV has partly been driven by a large increase in commercial and industrial businesses installing large rooftop solar systems to reduce their energy bills. 
I think this is key to us getting there, ladies and gentlemen, because if we don't play a part in moving us towards renewable energy sources, then progress will be slow. So if you haven't already, tell your executive director or your chief financial officer about the cost savings of going green. Many companies are doing it and the tide of change will only increase if we as both employees of companies, but also as consumers bring about change through the way in which we do things and what we buy. I mean, check out these 168 companies I found on 100.org website. Can you see someone who you patron? I'm really happy to see that Australian companies are in this mix along with like the with the likes of Apple, Google, and Budweiser. Yeah, Budweiser. There's a whole lot more there. So here's my suggestions. First, engage your executive or CEO in making renewables part of their strategic plan. If you, as an employee, show that you care, chances are someone who can bring about the change might too. But realizing that their staff represent basically customers, they'll soon realize that the more that people um, bring this to everyone's attention, the value that brings, it actually increases the value for the company. Next, install LED lights. If your office has halogen bulbs, know that they run at 50 watts on average. So an equivalent LED bulb is eight to 10 watts, and that's like an 80% saving. And did you also know you can now get like LED fluorescent tube replacements too? Also know that LEDs produce way less heat, meaning the radiant heat effect on the immediate environment is less, which in turn means that your cooling system doesn't have to run so high. It's a win-win. Here's another. If space permits, install solar panels or wind turbines along with local battery storage. Now, the person in charge of money might scoff at this potential upfront cost, but let them know that doing so will actually reduce and smooth operating costs and increase their property value. And better yet, the return on investment is typically two to four years. And after that, it's money in the bank. If they're worried about having to maintain something else that is going to break, reassure them that PV and turbines have long warranties and that once set up, need little to no maintenance whatsoever. Now, for businesses that maybe don't have the space to actually install renewable technologies, well, they could pursue a power purchase agreement. This is what a lot of big companies are actually doing now, especially ones with manufacturing and running energy, like high energy services like server farms. Basically, a business will make an agreement with a local renewable power supplier. More precisely, they'll sign a contract with them, agreeing on a set price of per kilowatt or megawatt. So as an example, your CFO might approach, say, uh, Neo and Australia, you know, the guys who built the Hornsdale wind power farm and what is also the biggest battery in the world. By doing so, businesses know exactly what their costs um, will be and have them fixed for several years. This is really attractive, and especially in Australia. As you know, electricity price, prices have skyrocketed since 2009, going up by more than 80%. Controlling for rises in costs of living, like check out this graph from ABC News Australia. Let's just soak this in. So, see what's happened here? General CPI has actually been steady, whereas electricity has gone through the roof. So, it's no wondering we're all installing solar. Now, I'm, I'm not about to go into the why this is, and it's not for this show, but look, if you'd like, I've got two great articles down below, and there's more links to today's stories and more. So, my take home message is that by entering a private purchase, purchase agreement, installing PV or turbines and batteries will stop these price rises from affecting you or the business you work for. Okay, so getting back to the Climate Council report, they note that 69 wind and solar plants are under construction, with almost all being privately backed and built. Other noticeable wins are that places like Tasmania and the ACT are reaching 100% renewable targets by the early uh, to mid 2020s, and that with the exception of Western Australia, all states and territories have committed uh, to renewable energy targets and or net zero emission targets. And Finishing on this report for our worldwide friends, the note that more solar PV capacity was added around the world than coal, gas, and nuclear combined. That's, that's amazing. Citing that almost three quarters of new energy generation capacity was renewable in 2017. And I'm very happy to read that the electricity generation from coal and gas fell for its fifth year in a row. And then what's the last one? Hey, 
17 countries have generated more than 90% of their electricity with renewables in 2017, but unfortunately, Australia, we weren't one of them, but we will probably be very soon. So that's it for today's show. Hope you've enjoyed it. But before you go, I've got a really exciting preview coming for you. Later this week, I've got an episode about the state of affordable electric vehicles in Australia, and it's got a really surprising ending. Yeah, <laughs> I said that. That sounds really bad. But hope you tune in, stay well, and hey, if you do nothing, be good, be green, and be kind to the environment.